the great enlightening being, universally good, spoke these verses. Just as people of the world, hearing of a mine of jewels, become glad at heart because they can obtain them, so enlightening beings endowed with great wisdom hearing the buddha's teaching the most profound character of nullity become calm at heart when they hear this teaching they are not startled or frightened nor are they overawed great beings seek enlightenment hearing this grandiose message minds pure able to accept have no doubt about it thinking to themselves that by hearing this exceedingly profound and subtle teaching they will become omniscient, guides of heaven and earth, enlightening beings hearing this message are very glad at heart. Producing steadfast determination, vowing to seek the Buddha's truths, because they incline to enlightenment, their minds are gradually tamed. It causes their faith to grow, not repudiating truth. Therefore, hearing this message, their minds are able to accept it. Immutable, stable, they cultivate enlightening practice. In their quest for enlightenment, they proceed wholeheartedly toward that path. Diligent, vigorous, never turning back, they do not cast off the yoke of virtues. Because they seek enlightenment, their minds are without fear. Hearing the truth, they become yet braver and serve the Buddhas, gaining rapport with them. As someone of great fortune who has found a treasure of gold makes whatever ornaments are suitable to wear, so do enlightening beings, hearing this most profound doctrine, think and increase the ocean of knowledge, thereby cultivating conformity to the teaching the existence of things they know accordingly, the non-existence of things they also know accordingly. As the truth of the teaching is thus, thus they do know all things. Achieving a pure mind, thoroughly clear, full of joy, they know things arise from conditions, and vigorously cultivate practice. They see all things impartially, and comprehend their inherent nature. Not straying from the Buddha's teaching, they are aware of all things. Their determination is always firm as they purify enlightenment. Immovable as mountains, single-mindedly seeking true awakening, with mind inspired to effort, they also cultivate the path of concentration, practicing diligently for countless eons, with never any regression or digression. The principles enlightening beings enter are the sphere of action of Buddhas. Able to know them thoroughly, their minds without aversion or sloth, as the peerless one teaches, they look upon things impartially. Without impartial acceptance, none can attain equanimous knowledge. Following the Buddha's teaching, they accomplish this facet of acceptance. They know things as they are, yet have no notion of things. All the gods of the thirty-three heavens eat from the same vessel, yet their food is not the same. The various foods they eat do not come from the ten directions. They spontaneously appear in the vessel according to the action of the gods. In the same way do enlightening beings observe all phenomena as arising from conditions. Having no origin, they have no destruction. Having no destruction, they have no extinction. If there is no extinction, there is no defilement. In the changing things of the world, they know there is no change. There being no change, there is no location, and no location means nullity. Their minds without attachment, they vow to liberate all the living. Thinking only of the Buddha way, never distracted or perturbed, ever with compassionate will, acting expediently in the world. Diligently seeking the ten powers, they are in the world without lingering. Without coming or going, they expediently teach the truth. These acceptances are supreme, comprehending truth without end, entering the cosmos of reality, yet actually without entering anywhere.
Enlightening beings abiding in these acceptances see the Buddhas everywhere, simultaneously giving them directions. This is called getting the joy of Buddhahood. <laughs>